Right, this time I won't do Oh my god, how do I block? How do I do anything? Ah, my head came off. <laughs> oh god, I was not expecting that. So I bought something. Oh god. <laughs> This is the Amiga A500 Mini. And I really want to get into this because look at it. I'm super excited to get into this. So it has 25 games on here, but also you can just plug in a USB and load all your games onto the system. And they allow you to do that straight out of the box, which I think is bloody fantastic. So with those 25 games, we've got Another World. We've got Zool. We've got Worms Director's Cut. We've got Pinball Dreams. Simon the Sorcerer, which is a game I've been wanting to play for bloody ages. The Sentinel, Alien Breed 3D, F-16 Combat Pilot, Battle Chess, Stunt Car Racer, Alien Breed uh, 1, I'm assuming, <laughs> um, Dragon's Breath, Speedball 2, Cadaver, that's a brilliant bloody name, uh, we've got Kickoff 2, uh, we have Paradroid uh, 90. We also have All Terrain Racing, which looks like something out of Star Wars. I like the look of that. We have Quack, California Games, which is a classic. The Chaos Engine. And we got Titties the Fox. Brilliant. Uh, we have Lost Patrol, Arcade Pool. We have Protected X or something. And we also have Supercars. Two. But of course, as I said, you can just load your own games onto this. Apparently this is compatible uh, with hundreds of classic Amiga games. So in theory, you could just dump your entire collection straight onto a USB and just play it straight from this, which is amazing. So this did cost £119 in the UK, which I think is pretty damn good for what you're getting here. And I'm going to open up the box and we're going to take a look inside because, yes, I'm very excited about this. Also, I love the rainbow design. I think that's absolutely beautiful. So this emulates the Amiga 500 6 600 and 1200. Um, you can save and resume whenever uh, via USB, add your own games, update firmware and connect your own devices because yes, this does have uh, three USBs on the back, which is nice. This plays at 50 to 60 hertz in 720p HD via HDMI and it also has um, CRT filters and different scaling options, which is lovely. And also this is being published by Coach Media, who I've uh, worked with quite recently. So very excited to get inside here. So... Uh, let's see if we can open this without damaging the box too much because I, I really want to kind of keep this box in relatively good condition. Now you may be thinking, Roxy, why don't you go and get a knife? Yes, because every time I've done that, you guys have complained that I've scratched something, so I'm not doing that again. <laughs> but if this is designed well, in theory, this shouldn't damage the box. And look at that. Perfect. Okay, right. Let's open this up. Oh my god, okay, that is gorgeous. <laughs> okay, look at it. Look at it, it's so cute! Oh my god, okay. I. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is adorable. Oh, that's so cool. I'm a little bit disappointed because the keys don't actually work on this, but you can see how tiny they are, but they're really beautifully detailed. Uh, like, they look stunning. This company also released the C64, um, which is full-sized as opposed to being a mini. And that actually does have a fully working keyboard. But yes, this is hard plastic. But it is absolutely stunning in terms of how it looks, which is really nice. On the underneath, uh, we do have this. Uh, this is serial number 6,671. I don't know how many of these have been made. Apparently, they've been having some trouble um, getting these sent out. Uh, because there's quite a big demand for them. So I don't actually know, but these might become quite rare. So maybe get your hands on one soon. We've even got some ventilation here to let some air in. Um, and on the back, you have your three USBs, your HDMI port, and even USB-C uh, for plugging into an external uh, power source. And uh, this does not come with um, any kind of power plug or AC adapter, um, because it just uses USB power quite easily. So um, we'll put that to one side and we'll look at the rest of this. So inside here, you've got your quick guide. Um, this is very nice. Um, so that kind of goes into detail. You've got um, your game pad and your mouse and it even goes into like all the descriptions of how to use it, which is lovely. You can buy the game pad and mouse separately in bigger versions, uh, but this does come with two in the box. Um, so I'll be getting those out now. Right, let's see what these are like, because obviously they're mini. Oh, they're very fancy. Right, first up we have uh, the gamepad. So let's take a quick peek inside here and see how small this is. 
Oh, that's definitely not small. I mean, that's more than usable. Look at that. Okay, so yeah, in here we've got this. So I'm going to very carefully take this out. Uh, that feels really nice. You've got um, kind of your D-pad and your A, B, X, and Y, uh, which is very nice. Um, is that Xbox? <laughs> that is, isn't it? Hang on. A, B, X, and Y. Yeah, that's Xbox. Brilliant. Um, also, you've got um, L1 and R1 up here, which is nice. And your start and your um, menu button here, which you'll be able to actually use to go back to the main menu. Um, on the back... Uh, you've even got a little right up there uh, of when this was made, 2022, Retro Games. Brilliant. I love this cable. It, it literally is, like, old-fashioned grey. I love that. I wish this came with an old, like, computer VGA port or something that you could plug into your old monitor. I think that would complete this. Uh, unfortunately, it does not, but... Um, you could probably buy some kind of adapter to be able to plug this into an old monitor if you wanted to. Um, let's take a quick look at the mouse. Okay, and oh yeah, here you go, brilliant. In here you've got the HDMI cable, which is also that kind of old yellowing grey. I love it. This is so nostalgic for me. I owned an NES back in the day, and those things kind of had that same colour to them, uh, especially if they'd been left out for a while in the sun. <laughs> uh, and we have the mouse, uh, which I think is adorable. Um, so... Sounds really good. And this is a laser uh, instead of being a ball, which the original was. So you can actually, that feels good in the hand. And that is definitely usable. So I don't think you definitely need to go out and buy the mouse and, uh, and gamepad, the bigger variants, um, unless you have bigger hands than me, of course. I have quite medium sized hands. I don't really have massive hands. Um, but this thing feels really good in the hand. Also, I'm wondering what you can plug into this. I'm wondering if I can plug in an Xbox controller. We might test that when we do um, the gameplay section of this video. But yeah, I really, really like this. I think it's absolutely bloody adorable. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you the gameplay and we'll see what this thing can do. And here we are. This is the first thing you see after you've turned on the console. So you've got Alien Breed 3D. You've got Zool. I really like um, the kind of design and it kind of goes through different pictures from the game and different screenshots and it also tells you what controllers you can use so with worms for instance you can use the mouse you can use the gamepad and it's up to two players or maybe even more we also have the usb because yes i've actually gone in i've added uh, quite a few games and we're going to test those out so if i was to press down a really nice thing here is you can save uh, up to four different save states for each game which is really nice so if i was to go to speedball I can save four different save states just for that game. Um, so that is absolutely brilliant. You can also rate different games so you can have them in a more organized list of your favorites. Another really nice thing is if you press up, you can see the exact controls for the game, uh, which is bloody brilliant. This one may be a little bit simplistic. <laughs> Literally every button is far apart from moving. So I've pressed the menu button. Um, I'm going to quickly go into here and look at system information. Uh, because yes, in here you will be able to upgrade um, this system with different firmware updates. Um, none have been released yet that I could find. Um, but when they do, uh, it's on their main website and you can just upgrade them pretty damn easily. All you have to do is just put it onto a USB drive, plug it in, and it notices it immediately. So that's fantastic. Also in here, we do have 50 and 60 hertz, which is great. And the ability to have it screen fit, moderate zoom, fixed size, and enable CRT effects and image smoothing. Now, I'd never recommend image smoothing. Uh, that's in quite a lot of different emulators. I, I never recommend it. It makes games look like watercolor paintings. Uh, <laughs> don't do it. Keep it as it is. You lose quite a bit of detail. Uh, CRT effect, though, that's up to you. Um, but yeah, so that is the main menu kind of settings and stuff. So let's jump into one of the games. Um, I'm going to press A, and let's see how quick this happens. There you go. Perfect. Now, the only slight problem here, of course, is that this console doesn't have a full working keyboard. Now, in theory, you can plug in a keyboard, USB keyboard. I tried last night. Unfortunately, the one I tried plugging in didn't seem to work. But as you can see, obviously, I need to press F1, F2, F3, or F4. Um, now, there is a workaround. 
So if you were to press um, the menu button, it brings up a virtual keyboard. They may make a bigger version of this console where it has a bigger keyboard, uh, like they did with the C64, which I'm going to be doing a video on very soon. It's turning up tomorrow. Very excited. Um, so I want to go for F1. Let's go for F1. That's fine. And that's going to load up Ignition. Uh, and then you can just close that at any time. I like how quick it is. Um, is it like the best way to do it? I mean, I guess that's the only way they could. Um, but I would recommend picking up a cheap keyboard and plugging it in. Uh, but let's jump in here. I love pinball games. Um, I'm a big pinball nerd. Uh, my love for pinball started all the way back um, when uh, Pokemon Pinball came out for the Game Boy um, Color. And that had a rumble pack from what I remember. It was amazing. Uh, my love for pinball started then. And uh, ever since then, I've, I quite enjoy myself a good pinball game. And I'm going to say right now, physics wise really bloody good um you use the um different triggers uh, l1 and r1 um to do this or you can press i think left and a there you go or b yes left and b uh, which is a little bit similar to um the pokemon pinball games oh oh come on come on no oh god okay go <laughs> that could have gone terribly i'm awful at this game right Ah, oh, it's out. Okay. Well, yeah, as you can see, it's pinball. If you like pinball, you'd like this game. Um, I'm going to have one more quick go because I'm a nerd. Here we go. I want to get a better score than I just had. Now, a weird thing is, it says I'm now playing as player two. I'm wondering if um, having the mouse plugged in can affect things. Ah, oh, what was that? That was awful. Okay. Um, right. So if you press the home button, a nice thing here. Uh, is it will um, suspend the game and then you can go down and save your save state, which is lovely. I'm not because I was terrible in that. Um, but if you want to reset the game, all you have to do is just press A on the game and it will just restart the game completely, uh, which is lovely. So a lot of people have been telling me that Kickoff 2 was very popular and um, so was Speedball, right? Speedball 2. Um, now, this is recommended to be used with a joystick. And um, I, of course, have the C64 turning up tomorrow, which has a joystick. And a nice thing about this company is that all of the controllers and stuff seem to be compatible with all of their other systems. So I'm going to be using the joystick from the C64 and plugging it in and playing Speedball. Uh, I don't think it's recommended to play with a D-pad, but we'll try, I guess. I've only ever seen one uh, Amiga A500 in the world. Um... At Pink Planet, oddly enough, about three or four years ago. And I was a bit confused with what it was, and I was very interested, and they ended up selling it, unfortunately. Um, so there's a lot of games I've missed out on, because, of course, I was a, a Mega Drive player, um, mainly, and then moved up to PlayStation 1. I didn't really have the computer like home systems, so a lot of this kind of stuff has passed me by, honestly. Right, let's try Knockout, I guess, or Practice. No, let's, let's play a game, right? Let's see what happens here. Um, press fire. Okay. Is that Robocop? <laughs> Literally. It's just Robocop. I love this already. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, by Robocop. Yes. Um, I, I don't know what's happening. Um, uh, accuracy, defense, speed. Oh, hang on. Could I? Oh, I think I'm right. So you can buy upgrades for your character. Oh, I see. Right, uh, let's just spend all my money then and make him have a lot of thrust. Brilliant. All right, here we go. Brutal DLX versus Revolver. Uh, oh, okay. So I am playing as the blue, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, well, they, they've won already. <laughs> they, they, they've beaten me pretty badly. Uh, uh, get out of my way. Throw it, throw it, throw it. Go, go, go. Uh, get... What was that? That was awful. Get out of here. Oh, there's no, um, oh God. <laughs> Hurry up, go. People have been asking me to play FIFA. This is practically FIFA, right? Um, get off the ball. Come back here. And there's no penalties. This is great. And the ball bounces. I love that. Right. I need to play this with a joystick. That would be a ton of fun. Oh my God. Throw, throw. Oh, nearly. Come on. Pass. Oh, the graphics are so cool, too. I love it. What was that? Where did I throw it to the enemy? Get the ball! Oh, my God. If I can get a goal here, I'll be very happy. 
Yeah, go, that's it, get it, get it, get it. Wait, do I not have it? Oh, it's there. I, I, I was on the floor. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Come on. Ow! What are you hitting me for? Stop it. <laughs> I, I don't know the controls. I should have looked those up before playing. I get the gist of it, right? Wow, they're really good. Um, yeah, don't recommend playing that with the uh, with the gamepad. <laughs> My thumb hurts. <laughs> uh, with a joystick, though, I can imagine that would be a ton of fun. Also, people have got um, PS3 and PS4 controllers working with us, so you never know. That could be a possibility. Oh, God, they just, just run you over, don't they? I, I could see myself playing quite a bit of this, though. Definitely. Um yeah, this is this is pretty fun. Okay, right. Let's leave that and let's uh, take a look at um, the USB. So this is the USB. I've uh, I've set up folders with different um, letters and stuff. Uh, it's quite simple to do. Uh, if you just read through the manual, it will tell you how to do everything. Um, but let's go for. I have a little folder here I made of tests. And in here are kind of some of the classic um, games I wanted to kind of try out. So, uh, we have Sensible Soccer, Secret of Monkey Island, uh, we've got Robocop, uh, Banshee Cannon Fodder, uh, Moonstone. Moonstone is one that I think you guys will like, from what I saw. I watched a video of like the 10 best games to download before, when you buy the console, and this was one of them. So, I'm going to press on it and then hit start. And I'm hoping this is compatible because obviously some of the games need keyboards um, and of course you can use the virtual keyboard for this. Um, but I'm hoping this works with the gamepad. Uh, Moon, Moonstone, A Hard Day's Night with a K. I love that. That's amazing. Um, right. It appears to work. So that's good. Okay. Gore on. Yes. Player one. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. And then let's select ourselves a knight. Uh, we're going to go for Red Knight, okay? And then uh, this is like a, a combat game. I don't know what this means. Wait, is this like an RPG too? <gasps> what? Oh, that, I did not know this was part of it. All I've seen is the combat. Okay, that's very cool. Tavern, do they have Farkle? If they have Farkle, oh my God, hang on. What is this? I have 10 gold. Uh, let's do one gold. Oh my God. You lost one GP. Now you have nine GP. It's literally far. <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> I, I was joking. Um, come on. Ah, you've lost three GP. God damn it! I'm not very good at this. Hang on. Go. One, one gold. Ah, it's a game of luck, and I'm awful. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna risk it for a biscuit. Five gold. Here we go. I'm I'm leaving. I'm, I'm all right. Thanks. I'm I'm okay. I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go actually. So, uh, I'm just, I'm just gonna go. Oh, oh, there's a guy. Oh, is it turn based? Because all those little knights are moving about. Ha! Oh, it is. It's like Civ, but very old. Right. Although I'm pretty sure that Civ was on the Amiga as well. I'm pretty sure I've got it downloaded. So we may check that out at some point. Let's go beat up this guy. I'm hoping I can steal his money. Prepare yourself. All right. Now, this is why I kind of wanted to play this, because um, uh, oh, oh, I'm getting my ass handed to me. Oh, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> I was going to kick his ass. I was looking at the wrong player. That's not my fault. Right. This time I won't die. Oh, my God. How do I block? How do I do anything? Ah, my head came off. <laughs> I don't want to play this anymore. I'm dead. How are we still going here? I'm very confused. I'm dead, surely. I'm up. I'm still alive. It is only a flesh wound. What was that? Oh, my God. Okay, I'm thinking the uh, controller is not working 100% right now. Because um, for some reason, X is move up. I may have to mess around with that and try and get a controller working with this. But uh, either way, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> 
so I do want to point out, obviously, all the games that are on the system and that come with it are designed fully to be working with everything. Apart from, obviously, some games don't use the mouse, some games use the mouse. So, obviously, with some of the USB games, you haven't been designed to work fully with um, the different controller schemes and stuff. So, take that into account. It's not the console's fault. It's um, the fact I downloaded a random game called Moonstone and my head came off. So, I wanted to show you this. This is Wings. And it's probably the best looking game on the system, from what I've seen. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, so I'm going to select Waldo. Here he is. And it is a full 3D flight combat game. And you've got to think, this is early 90s, right? So let's continue. And let's show you what this is like. I'm probably going to crash into a building almost immediately. But you'll get the idea. But look at that! It's gorgeous. I love that pixel art. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, right now, I'm using the mouse. Yeah, I'm using the mouse to fly around. And as you can see, it's pretty bloody accurate. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to get a keyboard set up, though. Because I'm wondering if you can get, like, different... Oh, God. Okay, I pulled back a bit too hard. Oh, because I, I don't actually know how to slow down. And I've also... I've just stalled. Did I land? Did I just land? I didn't die. I crash landed and it was awesome. I'm the best at this game. Uh, but apart from that, <laughs> I've been fired. Great. I've been fired from the war. I'm that useless. But just how cool is that? 1990. That's amazing. I just wanted to show you that because I thought it was really freaking cool. So I wanted to show you a game called Settlers. Um, and Settlers has been around for years. I'm pretty sure there's been multiple sequels to this game. Um, I tried playing this last night and something very interesting happened right at the very start. Apart from this absolutely gorgeous um, little cutscene at the start. Like, I love how this looks. It is so retro. And I, I just, I love this. Because of course I didn't grow up with this system so i haven't got that nostalgic edge to it but i have played consoles such as the zx spectrum i, I own the um plus two um variant of that i also own the little tiny mini one as well they didn't have a cassette tape deck unfortunately but uh um i've played a lot of retro systems over the years um so i do have a little bit of nostalgia for this era i think it's absolutely stunning but there's something at the start of this right so copyright protection was obviously a little bit different back in the day they didn't have drm or stuff like that like de novo or whatever is on the new games uh, that basically slows games down now unfortunately and like piracy was quite big back then because of course you could just copy the disc right you could just copy the floppy right so this uh was really fascinating please identify the symbols on page 82 of the manual to be able to play the game. <laughs> so you actually need the manual to put down the code. And that changes every time. It wasn't 82 yesterday. I love that. It's so cool. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Metal Gear Solid. Where the um, code to call someone was on the back of the case. And he didn't tell you in game. <laughs> <laughs> I just love little things like that. Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, we aren't really able to do a lot. Uh, what I can do is, of course, it now knows that's not right. Uh, but it's okay, because it lets you play. So, let's start into a new world. It is a full town builder. Like You can um, scroll and everything else with the mouse. I'm currently using the mouse, as you can see. And you can change the sensitivity of the mouse. I wanted to show you a game with the mouse. Because um, I think the mouse for this console is really nice. Um, but yeah, like, it's really, really awesome. Uh, as you can see, the build menu is, um, you know, grayed out. Because, of course, I haven't put the code in. Well, I think that's why. Uh, knowing my luck, I'm just not doing something right because I don't really know the game. But what you notice is that the trees are animated. I love that. I love stuff like this. And the fact that this little console can run all this stuff is very interesting to me. Right, we're going to play one last game. Uh, this is probably the most graphically intensive on the system. This is Stunt Car Racer, uh, and it's a 3D racing game. Now, you've got to remember, back in the early 90s, a lot of racing games were top-down, or they were your outrun style. Uh, you're kind of on a horizontal plane, and you're kind of turning the car into the corners. I honestly don't like either of those. I never liked top-down racing games, and I never liked... 
that Outrun style. But this game is actually trying to do full simulated 3D with physics and everything else, which I think is crazy. So, uh, my name, uh, my name is going to be um, Ro Roxy. There you go. Uh, and I don't know if that's going to appear on the back of my car like in some video games. That would be pretty cool. Uh, and that's the people we're going to fight. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of um, Micro Machines on PS... What? No, it was the Mega Drive. It was um, Micro Machines V3, the tournament edition, because, uh, and the characters look very similar to this. Practice the ski jump. Yes. Okay, that's so, that that's so cool. Like, that rendered that in 3D. I love it. I love it so much. Okay. And we're getting lifted up, and we're going to get put on the track, and here we go. Drop start. Okay, we're in. Now, as you can actually see, yeah, that is... Uh, okay. The car appears to be accelerating itself, which is um, terrifying. Um, <laughs> I'm steering. Here we go. But, like, can you imagine a kid seeing this back in the early 90s and being just blown away? Whoa! Yeah, that does have full physics. That's bloody fantastic. Hang on. Here we go. <laughs> I am very impressed. As someone who is a nerd for physics and video games and loves stuff like GTA 4's physics, that's amazing. Here we go. Oh, here we go. And jump! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> We're still flying. There we go. Okay. Um, this is amazing. This actually controls really well. Uh, I, I was worried it wouldn't control that well uh, because obviously there have to be sacrifices somewhere, right? But no, it actually handles really nicely. <laughs> it, like it feels really good. Um, I don't know how the hell they did it, but well done. Uh, oh, I hit the side. Oh my God. Here we go. Here we go. Full speed ahead! But yeah, you can just imagine kids of the day being just blown away by this. Because I didn't see 3D games until the PS1 came out, you know? I, I kind of only seen, at this point, Mega Drive. Uh, and you have some small 3D elements in, like, Sonic Spinball and stuff. And um, the SNES was definitely a bit more... 3D, but uh, I I think this is absolutely amazing. There you go, we fell off. Oh, brilliant! But there you have it. That is the Amiga A500. Highly recommend this. Actually, I think this is fan bloody fantastic. In the next couple of days, I will have a video going out of me unboxing and looking at the Commodore 64, a full-sized replica by the same company that did this. It's got 64 games on it, including as well that USB support thing. Uh, amazing. And you can mix and match the controllers with the console I currently have here. Uh, with that, it's going to be incredible. I hope you come and watch that video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. If you played any of these games growing up, comment down below. Tell me. But until next time, that's me. Out. Bye, guys. Pico, Pico the Penguin, Pico. Pico the Penguin, Pico. Pico the Penguin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute!